The ongoing African Energy Week Summit in uh, South Africa today had two sessions dedicated to Nigeria. One of the sessions was a panel of Nigerians that drilled into the country's new era of oil and gas. Let's take, some, let's take a listen. As indigenous players, it gives us the opportunity to, to demonstrate our local know-how, ability to interface with the communities and play to the strengths we have in terms of the terrain. And let me give an example. Uh, for us in Arade, uh where we operate from happens to be next to a river called the Sumbre River. In 2022, we had the problem where the pipeline going to the main export terminal, Boni Terminal, we were losing crude up to the level of 97%. So you pump in 100 barrels, all that gets registered in the terminal was just three barrels. And that was not sustainable. So being an independent on the basis of resilience, we had to find a way, how do we get to the market? So we have to play to our strengths of, yes, we have a river next to us. Why can't we move a crude on the waterways? And that's where the support of government becomes very important. So the support of government in helping, giving all the approvals for us to be able to achieve that, we were to, able to get that done in six months with all the contracting that was required to to achieve that. And the majors are going into the deep water. Are there still other opportunities for indigenous companies? And from just reflecting more broadly, where would you see Nigeria's production coming from? Okay, uh, thanks, Maso. Uh, you know, a lot of what uh, Larry has shared uh, has he's done a pretty good job uh, describing uh, the, uh, the, what the, the opportunity is uh, with the divestments. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, is very critical is the, is the strong corporate governance. As the indigenous companies uh, are taking over these assets, uh, need to be to consolidate uh, and ensure that uh, we're building uh, companies that have strong co corporate governance uh, that can execute and that are sustainable uh, uh, long term. Uh, the, 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 so the opportunity space, uh, like he had mentioned, uh, this onshore consolidation, uh, the shallow water, and the only way we can uh, step into the bigger space of, of maybe the deep water in the future is really through collaboration. So there's got to be among indigenous players a recognition that you know uh, we don't have all the all the capabilities within one company, and that we have to collaborate uh, to uh, to be able to be successful. And the ND Western uh, experience is that's uh, a template, you know, is, uh, something that's worked uh, well. Justifies or it's it uh, speaks to that uh, that importance of uh, of collaboration bringing uh, the different uh, technical cap capabilities to the table, uh, your financial capability as well is uh, extremely uh, important. And then having a real focus on how do we build organizational capability going forward. So yes, we may have uh, you know, technical professionals available today who have been trained by the IOCs and are available to the indigenous companies. But what of the next five years or the next 10 years, you know, where's that organizational capability going to come from? And so we, we really need to be very deliberate uh, about building that technical capability in the, in the industry going forward. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to sustain the gains we've made to date. I just want to dwell on what has worked for us as Walt Smith, Petroman, uh, uh, operating an onshore asset within the southeastern region of, of Nigeria. Sure. The, the top, topmost is the strategic focus of our leadership in terms of uh, what I would call environmental and community stewardship, ensuring that you have adequate stakeholder management strategies in place. And, and when we talk about stakeholders, stakeholders cuts across your host communities, your staff, your personnel, and, of course, at the end of the day, regulatory bodies and partnerships across the board. 
So for us as what Smith, it's been over 13 years, 13 to 14 years of incident-free operations within where we operate. Yeah. It's been a case of deploying what, what we call a global MOU with our host communities, and we've kept faith in that. Uh, strategically over the few, few years I've operated within the onshore space. But it's more of, first, you must be adaptable. You have to be agile. You have to have uh, a responsive type of strategy, a strategy that understands the peculiarity of the environment where you operate. It's not a one size fit all. It's a case of building your stakeholder management and your community engagement strategy from bottoms up. So from a needs assessment point of view mm -hmm. to uh, ensuring that the, your host communities and your host government understand the fact that, yes, you are here to build, you are here to grow, and you are to grow together, and you are to create value, sustainable value, and impact, direct impact to your immediate area of operation, first of all, and then to the extended uh, bodies around you. Projects have to deal with emissions. They have to deal with um, um, natural gas, whether it's... Uh, utilization, reinjection, whatever, um, those things have to be embedded in the project. Those things have to um, form the basis of the project. Um, uh, that, that, that's the first thing. The second thing, which is probably really, really important, is corporate governance within the entities that, that are seeking capital. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really important because if you want to expand the pool of capital available to you. Um, you want to be able to pass KYC and all those things from, from various um, potential financiers. So having a, corporate, a strong corporate governance structure is, is really important, and, and uh, that, that cannot certainly be overemphasized. Um, the last thing, uh, sort of looking at the traditional sources of, of financing, is the uh, is it's really important to demonstrate the ability to execute. Mm -hmm.